Hello and welcome. Yes, another Duck of Golfers show. We love golf and that's why we're here. We're here to watch and talk about what we are passionate about. And one of the things that we're going to talk about is Wingate, which was this previous weekend, Sunday Series 1 or Sunday League 1, the Pretoria Swing. And uh, yes, plenty happened. We've got our champion on with us and he's going to take us through his round. And the boys are going to break it down. Everybody played. And then we've got Thursday League tomorrow at Woodhill. We're back in Pretoria, and the Thursday boys get a, another bite of the cherry. Only the second one, because it's only February. And then we've got some singles and team matches to look at, some of the results, so that everybody can uh, see how it's all unfolding at this early stage, because there's many more games that have been scheduled. And then, towards the end, we'll have a quick chat about the new tournament that's coming and replacing the Challenge 500, something a little different for this year. And then Fricky might just uh, throw in a bit of the classic that might, that's going to happen in September, the beginning of September. As always, I'm not alone. I have the guests with me. And um, I'm sure they're ready to go. We've, we've had lots to say before this, gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, Mano. How's it going? We're not. I'm all. We're not. We're not. Yeah. We're not. Let's start with you, Rudolf. You are the champion. Uh, it must feel like uh, you're shooting for the stars there. Yeah, you can see. Uh, like my background, I'm mm -hmm. on a different planet, or yeah, I'm on, <laughs> yeah, I'm on a different planet. Did it take some time to sink in once you got home that you finally got your first victory on the Duck Tour? Yeah, it, it actually it, it took me a long time, or it took a lot of um, courage not to send my wife that I've actually won. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's no, it, it it took some time to sink in. I actually went and have a look. It was three years last that I've actually won something, so yeah. Fantastic. Well, well done. Uh, Leon, I see you moved a bit away from me, so if you can come a bit closer, we'll hear you a bit better. Does, eh? Keep coming, keep coming. Uh, yeah, how was your good. day at Wingate? Uh, um, Wingate is also always a nice uh, uh, course to play. Um, yeah, with a little bit of uh, all the tying that was going on there. Can't complain, was hitting the driver perfectly, but yeah, otherwise the weather was also nice, nice and cool with the overcast at the stage. But yeah, I've enjoyed my day at Twingate. Not a bad course at all. Fricky, a little minus one there for you. You played okay. Yeah, Mesa, we, we had our team game. Uh, obviously, uh, that, that was the, the main uh, focus for me. I actually didn't know that I was doing so well because uh, obviously I was playing off a scratch uh, for the team game. So... I see the one point as one point is something to myself that I'm not there. Mm. And then suddenly I was actually a minus one. So uh, quite surprised though, but uh, really, really lack a game with the teams. Boy, well, we'll dive into it and all the stats that we normally talk about. Uh, just to let everybody know, you might thinking, uh, um, this show is recorded because we've had some um, things that we needed to record the show. So continue chatting amongst yourselves on the chat line and then we will um, comment because we'll probably be watching it again. Hey, boys, watching how Absolutely. we do it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Be there. Um, let's get to a few things that I just want to bring up quickly. Have you guys been watching the social media um, stories coming, especially regarding Tiger Woods? I actually missed it, uh, but I've uh, heard about this uh, whole branding thing, so uh, I'm uh, quite excited to see it. So uh, please uh, throw it and let us see what's going on. So this morning, I uh, opened up Instagram, and the first thing that I saw was Tiger had released the much-anticipated brand of his, which is now called Sunday Red. As you see, it's Sunday Red, and there's his Tiger logo. So uh, this is going to make a massive, massive impact because all those Tiger fans, which is most people of our generation, will be straight in. So Tiger Woods, the flicky, you're going to make him a rich man. Uh, I think it's already rich, but uh, I'll try, you know. Uh, I'm just uh, wondering, you know, obviously the TW, that, that brand is obviously now totally gone. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a new collection that I need to have now for my, for my cupboard. I wonder if Nike owned the TW, and that's probably a reason that they, they couldn't yeah. use it. I don't know. No, no. It has to be. What do you think, Leon? Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, the TW has been trademarked by Nike. Um, obviously, with Tiger. But yeah, um, this uh, new Sunday Red, um, I think it's dedicated to his um, red shirt, black pants on Sundays. Um, he normally plays like that on Sundays, when he, especially when he's in the mix. So I think it's more dedication to, to, to his performances over the for a, a few years. So, yeah, no, definitely. 
And yeah, just to put it in there, that's why the Super Sunday ones had the, the red and black pants. <laughs> uh, we, we saw this coming, Elio. Yeah, no, no, we worked it out completely, yeah. That's that's method two, Flicky's madness, I see. <laughs> uh, gotta love it. I, I did hear the story. Tiger was saying, why the red? Well, they asked him why the red, and he said it's what his mother made him wear as a junior was red and black. So he, con- he attributes... I don't know if that's the right word. A lot of that red, black to his mom when he was playing tournaments. Um, yes, and then the other thing I wanted to quickly go through is uh, I saw something also on Instagram that pretty much describes how we are feeling about golf in general. Um, and this is what it says. It says, has anyone else had a sudden realization of just how much golf has a chokehold on your life? Not being able to play as consistently this time of the year has had a huge impact on how I'm feeling week by week. I've never felt like this with any other sports. I think uh, that is 100% true. If you're not a golfer and you're watching this, that kind of sums it up. You don't feel about this about any other sports. I haven't played in about 10 days and I've got total withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I think for yours, uh, it's even worse, Mazza, because you're actually on the golf course or close to the golf course and can't actually play. So, mm. yeah. Roots, what's say yeah. Yeah, it's, well, I'm just looking at my wife. She's busy with her MBA, and she can't play golf now for the next two months. And last weekend, she said to me, oh, "Can we just go out to a golf course because she can't she can't handle it anymore? Can we just go and play golf?" And she was the one that didn't want to play golf. Now she's pushing me to play golf, so I'm happy. This shows you, Leon. We've got issues because I need to definitely get to the driving range tomorrow. Yeah, so no, I can, uh, be ready for Thursday's game against you and Donnie. Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, golf is definitely like a drug. It's a fix for everybody that plays golf. Um, yeah, but I'm looking forward to that doubles match with you and Niku and um, my partner, Dani. It's, I think it's going to be a lacquer one. And it's going to be on a great night. golf course. I think we're going to have a good day. Definitely. Did you pack your driver this time? Yes. <laughs> definitely got the driver. <laughs> Is that okay? Sweet. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well, before we get to that, let's look back at Wingate because Wingate obviously has now happened and complete. This is the top 10. And as you know, there were three guys really that uh, had the greatest of days, including Rudolph there on minus 642 points, a nice little uh, 550 ranking points, uh, which is going to go a long way. Edwin Porchita, I was watching uh, the live scoring, and he was up there a long time, and so was Barry. And then suddenly, while I was on the way to the airport, I opened up score capture C. Okay, it should be finished now. And bada bam, Rudolf Broderick, the moon on minus two. Uh, sorry, minus six. So congratulations, Rudolf. And a whole bunch, all these guys tied fourth, uh, fourth on minus one, including Clint Flicky. There you are. Gary, another good round. Uh, Gerard De Bruto, Gustav Scumbi, uh, Shandon, another good round. And Vimpy Force. Uh, so well done, everybody, for for... Good play of golf, I suppose. Uh, Leon, where did you finish? I don't even know. How many points did you make? Uh, I ended on uh, minus three. So, basically, on my first nine, I played a, a, a plus three. My, my apologies. I ended on the plus three. So, my first nine was a plus three, and I played it even on the back nine. But, uh, yeah, kudos to, to Shandon. Um, holding on to that minus one, I think he had, like, four holes to go after he made his minus one, and he kept it out there and stuck to his guns. That's awesome. Um, we always say that anything over 30 points is a good result, considering that uh, it's, it comes down to average at the end of the day, because an average of 33 odd, 32, 33, most likely will get you the, the champion um, trophy. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we aim for. Um, Mazza, one thing I just quickly want to mention, uh, forgot to mention this, uh, Shandon, I mean, obviously with a fricky invitation, I think he shot like a minus seven, uh, I think at uh, Irene, he was minus four, I think, thereabout, and uh, this one minus one, so uh, Shandon is really, really looking good at this point. Yeah, at, um, fricky, I had the, the privilege of playing with him on Sunday. Um, one thing that Shannon can definitely do is launch the ball high up in the air, Um I think he needs to uh, 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 focus especially on that high launch of his when it's uh, it's windy out there. But yeah, he played quite well. Um, there was a one or two, three holes where he didn't make the necessary points he, which he could have. But yeah, um, like I said, um, with four holes or five holes still to go, sticking to his minus one, um, couldn't see him. He played pretty well on Sunday. 
Let's go to Rudolf. Rudolf, I'm going to put your scorecard and then give us some highlights of the scorecard of yours. Uh, you started on the back nine and a nice little four-pointer to start. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've started on the back nine. Um, when I teed off, um, I didn't have a great drive, and but I ended up with a four. So, yeah, then I felt actually good. But then the next hole, I made a seven. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, now my wheels are coming off. But then I just kept on playing, 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 keep on being consistent. And when I turned, I met Clint in the halfway house. He said to me, but you're second. And I said, ah, don't tell me. Please don't tell me. And he said, no, you're lying second. And I asked, who's first? He said, Edwin. I said, okay. So I went out. The first two holes, I couldn't drive. It's like I ended up all over the show. I was in the trees. But then on the second hole, that was actually my best, my best hole for me. Um, because I ended up in the trees, punch out. And I ended up making a par. Um, of a three meter putt. So that, that was for me a total surprise. And when I did that, it's like, okay, I can do it. And I just lift up my head and I win. But then again, my wheels came off like on the uh, fourth hole. And I thought, ah, oh, okay, I can't make seven. I can't make a free putt. My part threes helped me a lot. So yeah, I actually was, I wouldn't say lucky, but on all my part threes, most of my part threes on the front nine, the first nine, I made a par, and that actually helped me. That makes a massive difference if you're par yeah. in par threes. That is for sure, because you should at most go one over there. Um, yeah. But if you look at your front nine, you had plenty three pointers and you had three one pointers. And I imagine you just made a two pointer there. You would have been minus an extra three shots. So that's what are we on? Six uh, minus nine. Imagine. Ricky, I bet you not at twenty five anymore. Uh, I'm just glad that I didn't play with him. Uh, we actually, about a week ago, we were still uh, in for our singles games. And um, luckily for me, I would say <laughs> that it changed in this last week. So, uh, yeah, no, Rudolf, uh, you would have uh, heard me. <laughs> yeah, well, Fricky said to me, Fricky said to me in last week, if I hit the 89, which is my personal best currently, which I played at Val de Gras, he said, if I hit another 89, he was in big trouble. And when I came and made a 91. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, so how many shots have you lost? Do you know? Um, I wouldn't say less than five. Tricky, is he right? Yeah, yeah, it's about a five. I think he played off at 25. So yeah. yes, it should be about a 20 now, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm not the so, farmer, but I presume it's going to be a proper snap. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, yeah, so so guys, unfortunately, with uh, the, the rules of uh, the new handicap system, we've got uh, uh, exceptional, obviously, if you're playing uh, minus four. And anything from a minus six upwards, minus six, seven, eight, uh, you get a double exceptional. So, uh, yeah, you get a little bit of box slide at this point, but uh, yeah, you can still uh, recover uh, from about March, April slide. So, yeah, not all doom and doom. Well, there's been a few people who got box slides on their handicaps lately, <laughs> including Ian and uh, Kunrad, um, uh, Conrad uh, Ryan at the shootout. So, yes. yeah. Um, gone crazy. Um, Rudolf, uh, do yourself a favor and don't play Fricky in the next two months the single so that your handicap can go out and then you can beat him again. Everybody's rooting for you to beat him again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I want to play him like now because it's like I'm on the up now. But yeah, no, it's fine. I'll, when we ever we can play, I'll, I'll play him. Listen, not, what are you doing Sunday? Uh, I'm ready. Eh? We, can, we can go anywhere. This Sunday. Even, eh? Yeah, we can go to Mahalis. Yeah, this Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, the challenge has been set, everyone. The challenge is there. Um, I doubt it will happen, but um, we will see. We will see. Okay, so there was other guys who also played. So I'm going to show you the video now of the top five, some of the finishes. Thank you to everybody who sent me videos and took videos. Fricky, Ryan, and Martin. They're all over the place. I got a stream of videos sent to me on um, Sunday evening, Monday morning. And this is how it all came out. Well done. Top five, dude. How did it go? I had a great day on the on the course today. I think uh, everything worked. Uh, my driver off the tee managed to get quite a few fairways, um, but um, the minus one is uh, basically attributed to my short game. Um, around the t uh, around the greens, I was spot on. Putting was I think I had two or one one three putt for the entire round. 
Um, so I'm happy with, with what I've done today. And then also you had a team game today, uh, which you guys won, I think, four and three, right? That's correct. Yeah, so uh, uh, you contributed most. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, my, I'm going to say that my, 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 my teammate was my support at the end of the day. You know, okay. He guided me on doing certain things where I wanted to do stupid things. He actually just put me back on the track and said, no, let's rather go this way or do that. And that is, that is, that is where teams basically come in. You okay. know? Um, from an from a, from a in, from a entire game perspective, uh, we, our plan was to try and, and, and get the game done like three holes before we finished. We managed to do that, so it's just the message we're putting out there. Yeah, I know. First uh, game for this year with the Daku guys. It's a privilege and an honor to play with you, gents. Uh, we had good fun on the course. Um, yeah, I'll put it on greens for all the time, but overall a good game for myself. I think me and Barry did quite well today. We dovetailed nicely. I was on fire on the first nine. He came back on the second nine. I think this groin injury of mine pulled me a bit back but overall yeah I'm excited me and Barry we actually good partners together so I think we can do well I think the focus was on the team game today because obviously that's the first team game and I think that was the primary focus uh, we pulled through in four and three yeah four and three otherwise couldn't complain about the greens everyone played the same course um, but yeah game is getting better at the moment oh no that's good do you think you need to be able to keep the form up I try, I'm trying to got a, got a new coach Yaku Jakobs He's uh, coaching me on the side, and um, yeah, my short game is, is busy improving. Um, so yeah, the practice is paying off. Hey John, most of the day today you were leading, and then a little bit of a bump near but, the end. Let yeah, the last three holes bite me in the back. But uh, yeah, I must say the, the irons, the approaching the irons were just amazing. Couldn't miss the greens. Couldn't get off the tees, but yeah, it was a nice day out, out definitely. Oh, great. Anything different in your game or just it worked today? No, it just, it just clicked. Went to the driving range last night, had a couple of shots and just something clicked and just, just like I say, the irons were sweet. Just out of the middle all the, all the time. Yeah, everything just went well. Driver went well, but I focused mostly on my putting. So putting was one, two putts, where normally it was three, four putts. So yeah, my putting actually won the game for me. The greens were still fast, so even with a hollow time, I kept it in mind and then I just put it. And yeah, the, the hollow time didn't really affect me. I mean, Clint told me uh, I'm second and then I actually just fell off a bus. <laughs> the, the next hole that I actually went out and drive, I went right into the trees. And then uh, Paul and Wayne said to me, don't forget about your score, forget what Clint told you, just continue, let's play a normal game. And that's when I actually just start playing my normal game again, enjoy the game. And you know, I didn't even look at the scores. I just kept on playing my game. And Great. when I turned and I came to the ninth and I saw Clint and Hansi walk to me, I know, okay, it must be close. But I didn't really focus where I was lying. I yeah. just played the game. I just enjoy it, that's all. Like it. So there you have it. That's what everyone had to say. It looked very busy, gentlemen. Uh, the paddle courts were out there. I haven't seen paddle courts before. Uh, it looked like probably a GSC place going on there. Nice upgrades. Yeah, Mesa, when we got there, it was actually a bowls competition uh, there. Uh, so the, the parking lot was quite full. Uh, even there where we normally parked with the uh, tennis courts, uh, that was quite full. So, uh, yeah, looking good there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, yeah Wingate, uh, kudos to them um, with those paddle courses. It's quite nice and nice. Um, I haven't seen paddle courses like that before. And, yeah, especially the course was nice and mint and green, especially with all the rain and um, mm -hmm. I was actually surprised with all the traffic that they've got due to all the guys playing there over weekends. I need to obviously make a plan to go play Wingate, seeing that I've missed it. Uh, here's the pins. Uh, Rudolf said he played well on the par threes. Did he win one? And the answer is no. But Flicky on the par three 16th. Flicky, you can take us through the par threes or the pins, and then when you get to yourself, explain how that happened. <laughs> yeah, lekker. So uh, par four seventh, uh, Golf Concepts Simulator. That's Wayne Rideau. Uh, par 3 8, uh, Wimpy Force de Villiers uh, getting the uh, towel. Uh, Wim Jensen, uh, par 3 14th, Golf Raid Hydra Sport um, uh, Dreams Day. And then me, yeah, on the par 3 16th, just coming from a par 5, made a great little par there to half the hole with the guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the guys uh, team with us because we had a team match play. Uh, Clint was on the green close. And uh, yeah, I, I managed to put it. I think about a meter and a meter, thereabout, uh, just above the hole. Where was That's the pin? The part, 
<laughs> yeah, Mr. Pote, and uh, we half the hole in the end where it should have been a one. But yeah, it was a great shot. I mean, I normally don't find the green. It's normally the water on the right or maybe short. But uh, yeah, for me, it was great. And already delved into that little monkey's shoulder. So it was awesome. Lactus. Nice. Where was the pin and what iron did you hit? Uh, I hit a nine iron, one of the clubs that I didn't hit well in the day. And it was at the back, uh, probably about three, four meters from the back. Okay. Um, nice. Let's have a look at the Forbal Alliance. And uh, I'm pretty sure that Rudolf is in this one. No, not even. Edouard's Forbal with Vimpy Foss, uh, Francois Scholes, and Bobby Van Espey. Look at this. 93 points. Oaks are going crazy. Minus 21. An 8-pointer and a 7-pointer to uh, cancel out the 2-pointer. So, good effort from these gentlemen. I uh, wonder what the average is. What's uh, 93 divided by 18? Anybody's very clever. Yeah, um, 93 divided by 18. It was close to four points. Oh, five point one, made about 5.1. So that's Jeez. pretty decent. Whenever we're trying to um, do the four wheel lines, this is that's where your average you're trying to get five, and they did it. Let's have a look at the par threes. The best of uh, topping the charts of the par threes is Diobald van Rensburg, minus three with Glenn Williams, 11 points overall. Harald Sneeman, King Corbett. Well, there's a lot of minus twos. Leon, there you are. So you played the par threes pretty well. Then from yeah. Arda, Louis Jensen, Ricky Rudolph also played it well. Uh, Leon, uh, let's have a look at yours quickly. You made three points on the eighth. So I assume that's a par on the eighth and a par on the 16th. Yeah, no, I made uh, two pars and uh, two bogeys. Um, couldn't putt on the other two holes, <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed the, the par threes. So it was not too bad. I think that to, that should be my top prize for, for that innings on the golf course of Sunday. <laughs> no, Rudolf uh, made par on all double, all bogey. I'm not sure what the stroke was on the fifth and the eighth. Nice. Were they pars or were they bogeys? Yeah, two of them were pars and then two of them were bogeys. So, okay. yeah, two so, of them were yeah, three legit. shots and four shots. So like legit, in other words. Yeah. Uh, Gerard de Bruto, minus four on the par fours. With Barry Fenter minus three, we scored most of his points, including a zero point on the fourth. Fricky, there you are. You did okay on the 11th. Do you want to quickly tell us how you cocked that all up? Uh, yes. Uh, hit the tree here on the left. Uh, punched, well, not punched out. Hit my three wood into the bunker. Uh, just over the hole, Mr. Park Bogey. So, yeah, it was a fun, fun hole. Could have made a par, though, but, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> Best of the par fives, Ryan Jensen minus four, Barry minus three. Is this right? Yes, it is. Uh, Edwin minus three. Rudolph, you must be something. Here we go. Three. A uh, four pointer on the 13th. That's nice. A little four pointer. Oh. Yeah, I made a par on that. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, that's nice to have a par and get four points, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and Ryan went three, 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 three to make 12. <laughs> that, that's a stroke two. Is that correct? Mm, I think so. Yeah. That's the one with the water on the right. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a long yeah. one with a screen that slopes heavily forward. One pointer for me there. Yeah. Okay, then hole ranks. This is always interesting to wrap it all up from a stats perspective. The hardest hole <coughs> at Wingate is the ninth hole, which we kind of predicted when we did the last preview show, saying yeah. that uh, we said the ninth is a difficult hole because you got to hit it left, but then you got this big tree in the way. Absolutely, Mazo. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, one of the toughest holes in our Dakuk events, can I say. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth it. If you, if you can make a par on that one, definitely worth it. 11 yeah, is second. I also, yeah. I also contributed to the ninth day, totally black out there. With hitting my, balls, uh, my two balls into the water there as well. So, now I contributed to the average day. <laughs> Uh, the easiest was the third hole, which had an... And that's a difficult green, actually. Um, especially if the pin is tucked over the bunk on the left. 2.2, so well above average uh, from a scoring perspective. Anything else that stands out to you? The 10th was above average. The 15th was above average. Yeah. Oh, I think everything is quite reasonable, I would say. What does it all mean, gentlemen? How does the standings now look after two events? Remember, it's the lowest of the two. So it's starting to uh, filter out the, the boys. Rudolph has jumped to tied first. There you go, Rudolph, on 42. So you on th you, th was this only your first one? Of yeah, 
this Victoria. is my first Sunday one in league, yeah. So you cannot mess up again, basically. Because yeah. you've had your lowest now fall out because you didn't play one. So if you win it, you've done a great job. So keep that going. Gerard Neyman stays in first position. Edwin makes a big jump, also only playing one, 41 points. Shandon, as we mentioned, had a good second round, but he's dropped down to fourth because he's now lowest. He's 40, which is from Irene. Barry made a jump. Uh, Kun didn't play, but um, he is still there with uh, 39. Clint, Gerard, Karuna is all tied seventh on 38. And then uh, Gerard de Bruto. There's a whole bunch of guys tied on 10th, but he's got the most points overall, which is 70. So that pushes him to the top 10. And uh, if you're wondering, if you're new, it gets to the end, the last game. And if it's a tie, it will go down. It will go to the person who's got the most overall points. The one at the bottom. Okay. okay. There are a whole bunch of match play games. So let's go through them. We'll do the teams first. There's group A. I'm not sure who this was. I think it might be uh, the Quota. He played the Duff Shots. The Quota's Gary and Jomo playing Don and Sudesh. Winning four and three, so well onto the quotes. They're off to a good start, and um, three points and a four point um, difference. Points difference. Nice to see how that unfolded. If we let, have yeah, I think it was a bit unlucky there for uh, Dana. I think he hurt his his hand uh, the the night before. So uh, okay, yeah, he wanted to pull out, but uh, understood from the rules that we have that you can't just somehow do that. So uh, unfortunately, it was sad for him. But uh, yeah, close game though, and uh, Gary obviously played well. And talk us through your game here. It was all square in the end. It must have been tight, tight, tight. Yeah, it was very tight. Uh, up and down. Uh, I think we won the first hole with Gerrit making a chip in birdie for four points. And then uh, uh, Clint made a chip in birdie at the stroke one a couple of holes later. So it was really up and down. And um, yeah, we were one down coming to the last. And luckily for me, I made a par on those guys' bogeys. And they didn't stroke. So yeah, all square. But really, I was... really tight. I was playing right behind uh, Fricky and them, and I could see the, both teams were sweating bullets at the stage. So, uh, but well done. I mean, putting it back to square, that, uh, that's an achievement of, by itself. Yeah, but, but it was high spirit. You, you could see that yeah. we all were, there was no one stressing or, you know, yeah. being cross. I play I Care, started their yeah. campaign, which is Barry and Gustav against the Rough Riders, which is Gerard and Martin, a new team. And four and three victory as well for I play I care. So they top the charts, but plenty to go. We are in this team, Leon. So yes. let's see if we. Uh, I'm sure that myself and Nico can get a bonus point off the Wood Hill, and then we'll be able to uh, <laughs> top the leaderboard. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you know what? Um, I like uh, calling falsies, uh, first of all. Mm. But yeah, let's see what happens uh, on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to that match. Or on Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Sorry, my bad. Singles. Group A had a game. There's three that participate. This was also all square. Um, Wayne Jensen was telling me that Mark was at 1.4 down and managed to pull it all the way back. I think he was one up on the last. And then, unfortunately, the ball was stuck in very deep rough. And then he lost that one. Uh, if we look at Group C, Group C has Louis. Jason and Martin. Martin played Louis, a bit of a 7 and 5 hiding. So his points difference is massive, massive now, three points. So well done, Martin. You're sure. off and running. And Louis plays Jason at Woodhill. So um, no pressure, Louis. No pressure at all. That could be the end of uh, your singles within a space of a week. K is Grant took on Karuna, and it was a 3 and 2 victory for Grant. Three points for him. Well done. To those. So that's the singles. What's coming up tomorrow? Well, we already know. I have some trivia. Well, we look at the course layout of Woodhill. This is the course layout. It is an estate course, and we go roundabout, roundabout. So um, if you're not taking a cart, it is a bit of a walk. This is what I want to know. Tour pro Alan McLean equaled, uh, no, obviously an ex-tour pro, world record at Woodhill for most consecutive birdies. How many? 
seven, eleven, nine, or eight consecutive birdies. Would you like to have a guess? I'll go with A. Seven. Oh, me as well. A. I'll seven. go D. Eight. Okay. I'll go D. Remind me to give you the answer when we finish. Okay. Let the guys on the chat um, see if they can get it right. Standings. This is how we go into the standings. With only one played, Nico Roots is on 36 points, which is compared to the rest of the leagues is very low. 36 with his victory at Pretoria Country Club. Grant is on 35. Jacques Bonnard's on 33. He's not playing on Thursday, so he will fall out. Jason Ivans, Rudy von Abad, Gerard Gerber, Fats, Simon, uh, Kun Pretoria's senior. And there you are, Leon. Tied ninth on 30 points. So something to um, build on, shall we say. Yeah, no, definitely, Mass. I'm um, looking forward to to that game as well. Um, would definitely like uh, try and get myself up in the rankings there. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the information with regards to Woodhill. This is what it is: ranked in 50th in South Africa, which I think is, mm, and then Gauteng ranking 18, which I also think is kind of. If I was Woodhill, I would not be impressed with that ranking because I think it's much better than that is. A lot better. I agree 100%. Uh, yeah, I agree as well. I think it's much better. If you, even if you look at the greens, it's much better. Course record is 62. There's 6,323 meters. The previous winner, so we didn't actually play there last year. We played Thursday League in 2022 where Peter Prinsler won on minus 339 points. I think it was quite close in the end. And then he took it on the last. Uh, so the averages from 2022 was an average of 11 handicap. Points scored 30.46. Gross 89.98, which I think is pretty good if the yeah. average out of a field of, I don't know how many, it must have been 46 or so, is uh, 30. Yeah, I think that's a good score. Uh, like, like you mentioned, Mazo, uh, anything above 30 is, is pretty good. Um, yeah, I think uh, the benefit to that course there, Mass, is it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a wide open course, if mm, I can put it that 100%. way. So. If you can get off the tee box um, and you can land your second, um, I think you're in for rewards there. I agree with you. Uh, there is there is a lot of space. So if you have a good day off the tee box, you can really bash it down there and uh, get it on. It shouldn't be too... The scores are not always like crazy low. They're mm. kind of like minus three, minus two around there. But there definitely is scoring opportunities. Let me, um, while we look at the field, let's quickly decide what is your favorite hole. And then when we finish with the field, we'll come back to it. And then you can describe your favorite hole. And also, again, if you're watching on the chat line, then um, let us know what your favorite hole is. Here's the first tee. We start from half post, or 42 past 7, which is nice and late. It gives people the chance to drop off their kids, their wives, their dogs, and get to Pretoria, for those who don't <laughs> stay in Pretoria, and um, get on to the course on time. Jason Ivan's playing off a 7, may I add. He's playing Louis Wilde. Uh, yeah with uh, Eddie and Carl. Kunrad Petorius and Kun Petorius Senior is taking on Hilton Button and Rudy in the teams. Then uh, let's have a look at the 10th tee. There's an extra four ball on the 10th tee. Um, Kevin Ho and Jamie Sherry are playing their singles. And as I mentioned, there's our team game, a very big team game. Uh, Rudolf, uh, Rudy Petorius and Michael van Riel will be taking on uh, Carl van Mullen and Luki Janssen. So let me say... <laughs> Um, Leon, it's nice that your partner will come and play some Duck Cook events. Does he only play now on his teams? I think he's abandoned us now. He's too good for us. He's now shooting 72 and under and he's gone. No, I think he's just focusing more on his um, uh, personal game just to, to keep himself in the rankings for the, the pro events. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that he's playing at Michalis at the Handicap League. But, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see him more at some of the Duck Cook events. But, yeah, we will definitely be be available on Thursday, um, especially liking my handicap for Woodhill. So that's going to be nice and tight. What so is um, I think it's a 17. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'll make up for that three or four shots Dani is losing. So it's going to be quite a nice even. Yeah, even 17. Donnie's a plus two, so he's out of it. Nico's yeah. a three, so he also doesn't do himself any favors. And I'm a 14, so it might just be between the two of us. Yeah, it's nice and balanced, I see. <laughs> sure. Just remember, with, with Donnie's plus two, uh, mm. Nico will go to a five. So it, it brings him back into the game. Yeah, well, I'll go up to a 19. So you're going to double strike to strike one? <laughs> yes, uh, sir. Um, I need to get in touch with the handicap. 
management team because <laughs> this is not right. Um, I, I did apply for being a head boy at that course, but um, I was declined. <laughs> no wonder. Mm, okay, so give us your favorite holes then. Fricky, you go first. Yeah, man, so mine would be that last hole, uh, thing uh, from the top downwards the to the right, to then the right, and then obviously hitting into the green. So, um, yeah, to me, uh, some guys can't hit driver. I like to hit the driver. So, yeah, second shot is probably about a, a nine-ish iron. And, yeah, if you land it nicely, it's it's all golden for you for a par. So, that's mine. You're going with number nine. Rudolf, what is your favorite hole? Yeah, I actually have two. I've got hole go. five. Yeah, the one that you go up and then you, it's closing down the mountains and you can't really see the green at the at the back. Um, and you have to go between those two like little mountains that's there. Um, so that's a hole five. I hate that and hole. Then, no, it's nice. I like it. I hate it. I always I do that good hole. on that one. Okay. Uh, oh, you guys are hitting too far. That's why. Oh, I wish. Eat like an old guy. Yeah, I wish. You know what happens? You hit a driver. And then you're like, oh, well, I can't. I need to avoid all this stuff on top. So I'm going to lay up. And then you cock up the layup. Yes. And then you got 120 into nothingness. That's my issue. You see, with mine, it's like, yes, I can hit the driver. And then with my irons, I normally hit it quite high. And then with, I normally like 150 out of my six. And I hit it quite high. So I'm going over it. So, yeah. And that's your second one? It's also the ninth. Okay. I select all that one. Yeah. Leon, oh, wait, can you even remember the golf course, Leon? Um, I can't really, but for me, um, I, I don't have that memory of my partner like Donnie does. Um, but um, for me, it's any par five where I can bash the driver. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be happy with any par five that's 400 meters plus. So we'll see how you go on that fifth hole. I'm going to remember this. I'm going to say this is whoa, geez. this is Rudolph's hole. Yes. To do. I like that. Um, I'm trying to think. I think it's a six hole. Where it's like totally downhill yeah. before that difficult par three in the gap. Can we remember that one? Six hole uh, all the way down. If you hit it too far right, it's out of bounds. Yes, I think the six is quite narrow. No, not really. No. Uh, it's just pretty. Yeah. You've got a great view of like whatever Pretoria's part that is. Oh, yeah. Mainland sits on the right hand side. You can see Mainland. You're looking yeah. out onto Mainland. Yes. So I it's the one it. after your par five, that one it down is. there. Yeah, I can remember it, yeah. That is quite a cool hole. And let's go to the back nine. The closest in two hole, did I show the pins yet? No. The closest okay. in two hole is the one before the 16th. That little, little short one. The one where I land up using a seven iron to tee off. Because if you fade it, there's water. And there's problems. So, Leon, you can go for it. You, I think you could reach the green easily if you catch it. Okay. okay. But you need to catch it, <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's not very long. Okay, so let me show you what the pins look like. The pins, we've got four, again, for the Thursday boys. The par three seventh is the one after the six, obviously. Between, it's usually quite long. It's usually like 170-odd meters. Okay. Between the mounds, um, golf parade will be the par three twelfth, which is over the water. This one likes to bite a few people. So after you make your, your birdie or your par on that very long par five eleventh, then you'll play this one now. And then uh, the par 4 15th is the one I mentioned is the closest in two. I honestly think that green is like a 280 meters away. So it's not hectic. If I hit the 7 iron just short of that water and I've got 80, 90 left, then that kind of put in perspective. Yeah. And then thank you to uh, the Lakes Club Benoni. They sponsored a couple of two ball vouchers. So we'll give one away here for the Thursday boys on the par 3 16th. I'm sure we all know the par 3 16th with the water on the left. Yeah, that's uh, also from Lake Club. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, boys. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to, I'm going to have to send you a link with flyovers. because yeah, yeah. No way. You have to. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. So how long have we been going? We've been going 40 minutes. Okay. So let's oh, plus minus 40 minutes. So there's a couple of things we need to touch on. Besides Glen Vista, that's coming up uh, the Sunday, the 25th. I think you're all aware from the messages on the info group that uh, the carts, they have an issue with carts. And we do not want to get them to hire in carts for us because it's just, it adds to the, our total cost. And we, that's not really what we're trying to do. So everybody who's booked carts, and I think they're pretty much done. I think 14 were booked. Um, they will tee off after 12. Their issue is getting the carts in from the morning field. So you will go after 12. So, But the last tee-off is like 12.30. So it's not too bad. We will definitely finish at Glen Vista. 
I can't remember who won last. Uh, who won last? Uh, Clint Brutus. I won Clint was the last. Can you remember? Who yes. kicked the last name? I can't remember, hey? It was definitely him, I remember now, because it was his first victory, and that's where Gary made his albatross on the 17th. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> albatross, eh? <laughs> okay. um, then, uh, yes, so the correspondence will go out for Glen Vista. I think there's 80 spots booked, and there's probably about 70 guys in, so it's going to be a lack of field for that one. Fricky, many people have been asking, what is happening with the Challenge 500 tournament that we decided to brass? Yes. Because we needed a bit of a change because yeah. 36 holes of just playing 36 holes, we do it already. So we needed a format change. Yes. So you've been working really hard. I kind of left this to you to do. And this yes. is what you've come up with. Do you want the graphic in first or do you want to explain what's happening? Yeah, let me first explain. So uh, we, we actually had a Ryder Cup uh, scenario in, in play for us uh, because we had the Pretoria, the Joburg uh, leagues basically in. And we thought, you know what, split the two. It's like a you know America versus uh, Europe type of thing, and uh, yeah, just uh, unfolded in that way where the blue and the red also made sense. Where Pretoria obviously is the blue bull side, and uh, obviously Josie is the the lion side when you look at the rugby's, and yeah, just unfolded to blue and red, and yeah, we call it the team clash in the end. Uh, AM field would be the scramble drive. We had lots of momentum and the good feedback from our. Uh, shoot out at Eye of Africa, so we're going to go ahead with the scramble drive. And then, yeah, just to, to make it a little bit more interesting as well for the guys, we've got the PM field where the alternative shot then basically comes in, like in the Ryder Cup. Um, no. Also 36 holes, uh, very competitive prices at the stage. Um, yeah, and then obviously all the winners or the whole team, whoever wins, will get 300 ranking points, which is... I mean, it's crazy how much points that actually is. It's like a second place overall and everyone. So however big the team is, everyone will get 300 points. And then obviously the losers uh, will get 120 odd points. So uh, we try to adopt the love there that, uh, you know, even the losers get something, you know. So, uh, yes, <laughs> I'm very excited with this. As I mentioned, we had this little trophy. I hope you guys can see it from the side. Uh, if that, yeah, that's it. So this would be the trophy for the winning team. And lots of formats, lots of things that still needs to happen. We need to get our captains, vice captains. Uh, but yeah, uh, so it's open for everyone at this point. Uh, we wanted to do so uh, a, a qualifying criteria. Uh, but at, at, at this point, I think we're going to open it up for everyone. And then whoever is in Pretoria base will go for the Pretoria team. And then Joburg, obviously Joburg. So and then, yeah. Elaborating on for everyone, why we decided everyone is like everybody needs a chance. Why rob people of ranking points? So if 40 people enter this event and 20 are from Pretoria and 20 are from Joburg, that will be the tournament. It will be 20 versus 20. If it's 30 per side and there's a field of 60, it will be 30, 30. If the numbers aren't even, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I think uh, the scramble drive will be nice. It will be again the 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 technical part of deciding who drives what uh, yeah. when you're in trouble. And the alternate shot. I've never played alternate shot. Anybody here played alternate shot? I hit the drive, you hit the second. The only thing we need to get right is I think the next oak always has to tee off. Yeah, so so what you'll do is, uh, let's say for me as an example, if I choose that I drive from the uh, hole number one, then obviously one, three, five, seven, nine is my tee off. doesn't matter where you end up in the end. So you can't... You have to alternative with your driving, uh, if that makes sense. And Regardless of how many putts have happened. So if you're three putts and you're out of whack, you're still going to tee off the next one. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so so one, one, one person will choose the uneven and even numbers. But yeah, that's going to be very exciting and uh, you need to choose your partner very carefully. So are they choosing partners or are we? how are we choosing partners? Look, at this stage, uh, normally the guys that should enter is normally the partners because they know it's going to be a team game. So I'm anticipating that at least, uh, let's say me and Leon, for instance, uh, we go together and say, hey, yes, like, let's team up and we want to be a, a team as an example. Uh, I think for this year, we will probably allow that um, unless if it's free for all in the sense of that we, we just have a couple of names, the um, uh, captain will then obviously choose partners for instance so and you and Leon can't be on the same well, team yeah. because you're not in Victoria. yeah yeah now me and Leon won't be yes <laughs> he's that side <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, i like it what do you think yeah. gents let's start with you Rob. something different uh, yeah it's something different i uh, always wanted to play something like it and when we as a family play i always said to him let's play like it 
like IT off and the next shot would be my wife or someone who plays with me. So yeah, I would I would be interested in playing it. I think it's yeah, nice something like it. And I think with the alternate shots being in the PM, we'll fly around that golf course. Yes. Fly. So if you're making pars, you're hitting four shots. Leon, what yeah. do you think? No, I think it's a great idea, um, as I, um, it, it, it will also highlight, um, you know, if, for example, if my tee shot is the, my weakest link in my game, you know, I can always rely on my partner that's going to play with me to at least um, have nine proper tee shots, if, if I can put it that way. So, yeah, no, I think it's a, a, a exciting format, and yeah, especially north uh, north uh, against south, the Yuck's case. So I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Cool. And uh, 9th of uh, June, I think we're yes, right, yeah. 26th of May, but there's a lot of issues with the 26th of May. So we're going to move it to 9th of June. And why are we moving it also a bit further is because we kind of want to see six months in who's playing where. You know, if we do it earlier, then it's kind of like just random. So that is why it's in the middle of the year. And we can't, we don't want to push it too close to the tour either. Then it just gets very busy. Uh, and then finally, speaking of the tour, Fricky, it is people can... Uh, you're going to post the information shortly or yes, in a week? It, it's, uh, well, shortly, uh, tomorrow maybe. So, uh, yeah, classic time. So, it's definitely at the Highland Gate. Uh, we've uh, confirmed our spots, uh, lots of new things uh, or you know, upgrades, can I say. Uh, pricing will be around uh, just below 7,000 rand. So, I think last year it was 6,950. So, it's going to be around there as well. Uh, what we are including as well is halfway. So halfway will also be included in this with that price. So you score a little bit. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the um, pricing of the food. But yeah, I don't see any any change on that. I think it makes yeah. it, uh, you've done well because to add lunches and keep it the same price, we've mm -hmm. done well somewhere that you've now cut back. So I don't know whose discounts you've or arms you've twisted, but well done. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Look forward to it. Gents, any uh, last words, boys? Oh, you Oaks didn't remind me. The, uh, the answer. The answer. Eight. Yeah, yeah. Just, just so it's eight. Because I know yeah. it's eight. It's eight, man. The answer is nine. C. Ah, yeah. C. <laughs> nine. Yeah. And I think I read that it's from hole seven to 15, if that is nine holes. Worse. That, that must have been an impressive golf. Yes, imagine making nine birdies in a row. Phew. It's almost oh. like that Oku shot 57. Yeah. This past weekend. <laughs> and then the South African, that, um, what's his name? Aldrich Porchetta? Yeah. Also shot like a 69 or something silly this weekend. Sure. Must have been playing on a magic course. Yeah. That's, uh, that's awesome, man. It's Your... impressive. It's impressive. Mm. One day we'll get there. I first have yeah. to break 80, though. <laughs> You'll get there, Mazo. Mm. Yeah. All right, boys, that's it. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for watching. And uh, we will see you again at some point. I'm not sure when, but uh, it's been a pleasure to have you with our company. Uh, Rudolf, thanks for making your debut on the show. Leon, as ever, thank, thank you. you for your input. And Fricky. Thank you, Mazo. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, James. Have a pleasant one. Stay safe. Ciao, ciao. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Au revoir. Bye.